that I am. Oh, oh, meaning, he exists. Many folk today still have the same problem, not knowing who the great I am is. Amen. Yes. They have this mentality where they think I'm the stuff. Mm. Amen. Amen. They think I built myself. You did it. That I, I, my, my, me, me, me mentality. Amen. Amen. And that's where people are today. But this Amen. morning, we're going to talk about the great I am. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we're just overjoyed to be here this morning. And we thank God that you're here as well. Amen. Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to the congregation here in Brookship. I am so excited this morning, a little more so than usual, because of some events that took place during the week, and I stand happy that Brother Paul would say to be set for the defense of the gospel. Amen. I'm happy to have that opportunity. We want to welcome our visitors, but you know you are our honored guests, yes. and feel free to come whenever you are in the area. Mr. King, good, good having you here with us again this morning. Yeah. We're young, we're young men on the back. Good to have you here this morning. Good to see you again. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you here this morning. And we thank God you chose Brookshire as your place to be on today for worship. Amen. If you visit with us, we would like you to please file a, a business card. You can turn those in as we have a collection and recognize you at the end of our services. This morning, with the events that took place all week long, I thought we would bring this lesson. Amen. What kind of gospel do you want? Mm -hmm. What kind of gospel do you want? Our text is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. The Bible reads, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen. That word accursed in the Greek is anathema. Yes. That means you're going to hell. Amen. You know, you are then rejected from God from that point forward, and you cannot be saved. Amen. In other words, if an angel came down from heaven right now and stood right here in this pulpit area, he got to tell you the very same thing I'm telling you, or he cannot go back to heaven. Amen. It is just that serious. Amen. 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 And besides, the next day come through the angels who are of the uh, physical nature, not spiritual. Amen. The angels now are the messengers being the preachers of God's word. Amen. The spiritual angels, God don't speak through them. He speaks not through the word. Amen. 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 So this morning, what kind of gospel do you want? For the context or the background of our lesson, we have the Gentiles, the people who weren't Jews by race, in the area of Galatia. Galatia wasn't just one congregation. It was a number of congregations in the region called Galatia. Amen. And what had happened was some Jews, our Jewish brothers, had gone down to Galatia and taught the Gentile brothers that except a man be circumcised after the man of Moses, he can't be saved. Amen. You better read it. But look in, in 15 chapter of Acts. Yes, sir. We're going to start reading verse 1 and 2. And, and the Bible reads, And certain men which and came, certain down, men Judea, came down from Judea, taught the brethren, taught the brethren said, saying, Except ye be circumcised after, after the man of Moses, he did not be saved. When therefore Paul, when and, Paul, Paul, Paul and Bob had, no had no small decision, with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other and of them should go up to Jerusalem, go to, Jerusalem to the apostles and, to the apostles and elders, elders about this matter. Oh, wow, this matter. So that, that can't be a big problem in the church way back then. Somebody came through and taught false doctrine. 
The biggest enemy of the Lord's church today is false doctrine. Some Jewish brothers had gone down there and taught these new converts, you got to be led by the Lord Moses and be circumcised to be saved. And got so mad, they had called a big conference. And while they got there to discuss it, they didn't argue about it. Brother Roberts, how do you know they argued about it? Drop down to verse 7. And the Bible says, and when there had been much disputed, see the earth, and when there had been much disputed, Peter rolled up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good Bible go, that God made choice among us, and the Gentiles by my mouth to hear the word of the God and believe. See the earth. That they got all blown up because of false doctrine. Mm. Well, brother, I mean, why would that happen? Because some folks love to take sides. Mm. I don't think you heard me. Amen. No matter how right or wrong something may be, mm -hmm. some people will always take sides because my brother said it. Amen. Or because my mother said it. Amen. Or because my daddy said it. Amen. Or because, yeah, hey, 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 man. Wrong is wrong no matter who says it. Amen. And my mother taught me when I was a little boy, you never get too close to anybody. You can't tell them when they're wrong. Amen. You may have them. Amen. Amen. Anybody can be wrong. Amen. But you don't take sides. They have divided me in your church because people took sides. You stand on what the Bible says. Amen. Stand on God's word. No matter who is it. Amen. So it's going to be a real bad problem. But the time say, drop down verse 24. And the Bible says, For as much as we have heard, Here's the answer. For much we have heard, That, there, that certain, that things, certain that we've been out of the world, Have told you, Subverting your soul, subverting your soul saying, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, we To gave whom we gave no such Commandment, see? In other words, they are lying. Amen. Amen. We gave no such commandment. Hmm. See what happens when you preach false doctrine? It caused other folk to stumble over it. Because everybody has influence over somebody else. Amen. Be it negative or positive. Amen. Everybody got influence over somebody. That's why it's best to check how you live. Amen. 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 Get your household in order. Amen. Because you know how our kids are. Amen. Our kids play with whatever they do is right. Amen. Your mama do is right. Not necessarily, but that's how our kids feel. Amen. And they'll go up in the very same way. Amen. If dad got a bad attitude, Amen. then the kid might have a bad attitude. Amen. 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 That's an Amen, church. If mama always screaming and hooping and hollering, then amen. amen. <laughs> That's why the one is a weird thing about woman being a preacher. Amen. It's better than having a man hooping and hollering and the fool. One man would come up to his wife and she always hooping and hollering and the fool. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Marvel in this context means 
Don't, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm amazed. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. He said, I'm all that you are what? So soon removed. You are so soon removed from him that, from him that called you from the grace of Christ. Get now to another gospel, which is not, which another. Is not another. But there, but there be some, some that will trouble you and pervert or God change the gospel of Christ. Now what? Understand we're another. See, in our English vernacular, it's hard to understand another because another means another. But to understand what he meant back then, go back to the Greek Bible, you'll find two different words for another. You got almos and heteros. Almos means another of the same sort. Amen. What does that mean, Brother Bobby? Well, let's say you needed a kick. Who would be the perfect donor? A sibling, a brother, or sister? Especially if you have the same parents. Amen. That's another of the same sort. Amen. See? But if someone who's not able to give a kidney, he'd be another of a different sort. See? Amen. Almost another of the same sort. And that you know, another of a different sort. When Jesus our Lord promised the apostles, and I will send you another comforter. In John 14, 6, that another in that country, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. That's another almost, another of the same sort. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See? That's right. But look over here in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and verse 2, and the Bible says, For I am jealous over you. Brother Paul said, I am jealous over you with God and jealousy. For I have espoused to you to one husband, to one husband that I may that I may be to you a chaste virgin to Christ. to Christ. Read. But I fear. But I fear. Lest by any means, any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. As the serpent tricked Eve with his soft tote. So your mind should so be your mind, from the simplicity. Hear that? that hear that? Right. That your mind will be corrupted. Of the simplicity that's in Christ. Read. For if he, for if he that cometh preaching that come, Jesus. Here I see another. That's heteros. That means another of a different sort. Hmm. Not the real. See the word Jesus is a common name. But he's talking about another Jesus <coughs> who's not of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See? Heteros. Another of a different sort. If you come in and preach another Jesus, whom we have not whom preached, have not preached or, if he or you receive another spirit, another spirit he have not what you have not received, or another gospel, or another gospel which, he have not which you have not accepted, he might well bear with him. He said, I'm kind of afraid of you. <laughs> he said, I'm coming to you bringing the real Jesus. Mm -hmm. I have all these problems out of you. He said, well, I'm afraid if somebody else comes along, <laughs> And then preach another Jesus, mm -hmm. another spirit, and another gospel. Mm -hmm. You might accept that foolishness. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's going on right now when you have a perverted gospel Amen. that changes it. Amen. I don't know anybody told the funeral a little, little while back, Miss Houston. And that guy who had the stage said, well, I, I don't know people out there saying I don't believe in a prosperity gospel. But that's all I know. And I agree with him. That's all he knows. Amen. But see, that kind of stuff come by way of a prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. They changed it. Amen. So we're talking about almost heteros. Look at this word another again. You see, if you're going to go for another, it got to be on the same sort. <coughs> Let's get John. In Matthew, the 11th chapter. We're going to start reading verse 2. Now, when John had heard. Now, when John heard, heard in prison the words of Christ, the words of Christ he said to, he his, said to his disciples and said unto, and him, said to him, Art not he? That should come. Or you are the one that should come. Or do we look for another? There we go again. Or do we look for heterodox? Another of a different sort. Are you the prophet who we're talking about in the Old Testament? Are you the one that have to come? Or do we look for another? Hmm. 
That is a very compelling question, isn't it? Is Jesus Christ, the one we pray to and say to and who we love so much, is he the one that was to come? Or do we look for somebody else? Well, the mother say yes. Yeah. They, they say Muhammad. Amen. Amen. But let's see how Jesus our Lord answer. Read. Jesus answered and said, and said to them, Go and show John again. You go and show John again those things you will hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lame walk. The lepers are clean. The lepers are clean. And the deaf hear. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised the up. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the and gospel, the poor gospel, have the gospel preached. preached. Under them. And blessed is he, and that he that whoever shall, whoever shall not, not be offended in me. In other words, John, you ought to know better. Hmm. Do we have the real truth? Yes. Or do we look for another? Go ahead. Are you satisfied <laughs> with what Brother Robin said? Or do you look for another? <laughs> Amen. Amen. If I'm not preaching the truth, then look for another. Amen. I don't care about who it is as long as they preach the truth. Amen. Stand on the truth. What happened now, people, by going this perverted gospel way, they have made unscriptural changes. And they're still doing it. Talking about a praise dance team. That's nowhere found in the real gospel. That's what's going on today. People will accept. See, once you alter the gospel, you, you can make all kinds of changes. Yes, sir. Do all kinds of weird things in the name of religion. I have a copy of the program from Miss Houston. I got a copy of it, of, 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 of the funeral. I got a copy of the whole thing. And it says on the bottom, child of God, how do we know? And what I heard that the four hours of that funeral, four hours, they, 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 they put her in hell. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I read the program, and the program don't mention Dr. Brown, they ain't nowhere. Nowhere on the program. Not even a picture of him in there. It never mentioned anything about him getting married, nothing. Talk about perverted. Mm. I know they were still mad with the blood, but I'm not a Bob Brown fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Bob Brown fan. I'm just saying right to right, just right. Amen. That, that, he was still married to the woman for a number of years. Had a child with her. I'm having a problem, but did, let's, what about common courtesy? Amen. That man had the right to be like anybody else. Amen. But see, that's a family thing. See, that's all. all, all. All it was family. They were still mad with him, so they just froze him out. Made him leave move seat three, three times. I understand. But but see, what bothered me is the message that was sent out. They sent out a false message trying to say that she already in hell. Hmm. No. Yeah. Oh, they were saying the guard, saying all the same, singing the choir in heaven. How you know it's a choir in heaven? How you know? Yeah. Well, see, that, that's what that would happen when you change things. Mm -hmm. When you have a perverted gospel, you have a perverted message. Yeah. <laughs> Got on there, reverend, some, some reverend woman. A, a woman can't be a reverend, a man can't either. Well, who's the real reverend? Have the Bible tell us, right? And Psalms 111 and verse 9, let's find out who reverend really is. And you only find reverend one time in the Bible. Let's find it. In Psalms 111 and verse 9, the Bible says, He sent redemption unto he his people. Sent to his people. He, has commanded, he commanded his company holy, holy and reverend in his name. Let's find out who the his is. Go to verse 1 and the Bible says, Praise, praise the Lord. He the Lord. That's I God's praise, name. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. That applies to God and God alone. No man, no woman have the right to the name Reverend. Amen. 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 The Bible says this. 
But see, that's what happens when you change stuff. When you, with, with, with perverted gospel, everything is changed. Here's, here's, here's an example. I have a book right here. I'm going to read it. Here they say in their book, on page 183 of their book. Well, love it. I got it marked up on the last paragraph. What it says here. What then does Christian baptism signify? They say, what then does what Christian baptism signify? It is not a washing away of sins. It is not washing away of sins. It's called cleansing of sins. It's called cleansing through faith in Jesus Christ. That, that they say in their book. But what does the Bible say? In Acts 22 and verse 16, the Bible says, and now, what, 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 what does now mean? At this point, and now, what tarries thou? What are you waiting on? Arise and be baptized and, be baptized and wash away thy sin. And do what? Wash away thy sin. And do what? Wash away thy sin. And wash away thy sins, calling on them. Who will believe? See? But with a perverted gospel, you'll change things. This is what the name of it? The truth that leads to eternal life. That's, that's not right lie. <laughs> Man. This book belongs to Jehovah's Witnesses. That's their book. Oh, my Lord. That's their book. They say baptism is not a washing away one sin, but the Bible says it is. See what happens when you pervert the gospel and, and, and you change stuff? You can bring about a whole bunch of unscriptural changes. And I have some more. Well, love it. In this book, they say, in their book, about faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Hear what they say in their book about, about faith only. I have Mark right here in their book about, here we go, on page 42, paragraph 1 says what? We are counted right before God. We are counted right before God only. Merit of our Lord, of our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ by, faith by faith and not for and our, not our own, own work on the earth. Wherefore, Wherefore he, we, we are justified by faith only in a most wholesome, wholesome doctrine and, and very faith. full of comfort. They said by faith only, that's a very wholesome doctrine and very full of comfort. They said in their book. But the Bible says in James 2, and verse 17. Even so faith. Even so faith. If it had not works is dead. Be it alone. Drop down verse 24. We see it in how thy work is the man justified. And not by faith only. See? They well then this book, my Lord. This book is tight. Understanding the Methodist Church. See? <laughs> the Methodist Manual. They teach faith only. The Bible says, we see then that by works is the man justified and not by, by faith, faith only. See? With perverted gospel, you get false doctrine. They keep changing stuff. I have some more. I call it my bag of tricks. Well, uh, this book says, on page 22, paragraph 1, they say this in their book. It is most likely in the apostolic age when there was but one Lord and one faith and one baptism and no different denomination existence 
The baptism of the convert by that very act comes to him a member of the church and once endowed him with all rights and privileges of full membership. In that sense, baptism was due to the church. But now it's different. It is different. Well, who changed it? Who changed it? In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, There is one body and one spirit, even that you're called, and what are you're calling? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who's above all, and through all. They say it was not different. Well, who changed it? That's what happens when you have a perverted gospel. What folks want now, Brother Robin, you preach too hard and you preach too tough and everybody wants it. That fine brimstone preaching, that ain't gonna help nobody. See something like Joe Osteen, oh. something sweet and something. That's not new. Amen. That mentality Amen. not new. Amen. The wise man says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse number 9, the thing that has been yes. is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it can be said, see, this is new? It was done by them before time. In, in other words, the game has a change on the present. Isaiah, the 30th chapter. We're going to read verse 8 and verse 9. Now go. They said not go. Write it before, Write them, before in them in a table. And note it in a, and book, it in a book. That it may be that for a time to come forever and ever. That this is that a rebellious God people. said this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Lying children. children that, will that children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Read. Would say to the seers. They said to the seers. See not. See not. And to the prophet. Prophesy not unto us. Don't right tell us the right things. Speak unto us. Move. Give us something smooth. Prophesy deceit. See, they said, don't tell us the truth. Don't give us the right things. Prophesy smooth things. Prophesy, in other words, tell us something soft. Yes. Something smooth. Something everybody like. Mm. See, that's what the problem is. Amen. That happened when you have Amen. a perverted gospel. In other words, tell them something they want to hear. Amen. Don't be so hard. Don't be so hard. Don't be, you be too loud. You be too loud. Shut up! <laughs> Amen. Amen. What you want, what have the folk do today is this soft, soft, watered down kind of message. Mm. Like Osteen Jr. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. I don't talk about the gays. I don't talk about the adulterers. I don't talk about the bank robbers. I don't, well, well, talk about who then? <laughs> Let me tell you something, and hear this real clearly. There is nothing wrong with any of us that faith and truth couldn't straighten out. Amen. That same mentality back up on us today. Give them something smooth, something soft. Why? Because that's the result of a perverted gospel. They changed it. Amen. To fit their own little needs. Amen. The gay say, if I make God gay, then I can be gay. Amen. Amen. That's where it is. That's where it is. If I make God anything I want God to be, then I can be what I want to be. Amen. That's foolishness. I ain't so bad. Mm -hmm. I'm a good person. I pay my taxes. And you're going to hell too because Amen. that's wrong. Amen. You pay the taxes, yes. But it's going to be gay. Amen. Now, little boy, the word gay may happen. Amen. Now it carry a whole different meaning now. <laughs> it means something totally different than what it used to mean. Amen. Amen. But that's what's happening right now. What kind of gospel do you want? They were the kind where you get up there and just act a fool and cut and do everything. The same thing you do in that club on Saturday, you do it on Sunday church. Amen. Hey man, that's the kind they want. With a cut a rug in church. Hey man. The same way you do on Saturday night. The same way. Hey man. That's what's going on now. When you change the message, you're going to 
to change the results. Amen. Amen. That's why so many people going to be lost. Because they see, 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 you can't be taught wrong ways baptized right. It doesn't work that way. What makes your baptism valid is the teaching that proceeds. You got to be taught properly. Amen. Acts 19. We have an example right here in the Bible. Some folk have been taught wrongly and baptized, but they weren't taught properly. We're going to find the example. In 19th chapter of Acts. I'm going to slow down. We're reading a little slow this time. I know I talk fast, so I'm going to start talking just like this. <laughs> Go a little slowly. So we make sure we get this and get it properly. In Acts 19, and verse number one, the Bible reads, And it came to pass that while Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finally certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost which you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people they should believe on him which should come after him. And that's the Lord Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized and they see. And I slowed down to get that. Acts 19, 1 through 5. You see, the folk had been taught wrongly and baptized, but they weren't taught properly. They had to go back to where the mistake was made in the teaching. You can't be taught wrongly and baptized right. And, and you, look, verse 5 don't, don't say they were rebaptized, did it? No. Because they realized upon being mistaught that baptism was invalid. It was no good at all. They had to go back to where the mistake was made. Amen. If you're traveling down the highway trying to get to a certain place and you get lost and you stop finally and ask direction. <laughs> and they tell you, well, you made the wrong turn. You got to go back to this place and turn to the right. Hey, Amen. When, when you then say, well, hey, I've been shopping all this road. No. Amen. <laughs> hey, you got to go back to where the was made. Amen. Especially when you're traveling. Hey, Amen. Let me remind you of the story of a guy who was traveling from New York. He was going back home to Alabama. Older guy. And he was riding the bus. So he. He paid the fare for the bus, and he was going to his seat wait, waiting for it. He saw a scale, way scale, had a sign on it that, that said, I know you. <laughs> so he got on the scale, it cost one dollar. He put a dollar in there, and it said, you are a black man. You weigh 150 pounds, you're 64 years old, and you're heading to Alabama. We got the scale and looked at it for a minute. He's right. So he saw Indians sitting over there. So, so can I see for a minute? Stay right here for a minute. So he's doing the scale. Put a dollar in there. You are an Indian. You weigh 180 pounds. You are 45 years old. And you're here in Oklahoma. Is that true? Yeah. That's true. I'll take, well, let me have you a jacket for a minute. <laughs> you are still black. <laughs> you weigh 150 pounds. You hit Alabama. And by food out of India, you have missed your bus. <laughs> Context. With a perverted gospel, you're going to get all kinds of stuff coming. Amen. See, it's okay to have a ship in the water. When you start having water in the ship, you're going to have problems. Amen. It's okay to have the church in the world. Amen. You start bringing the world in the church, you are going to have problems. Amen. Amen. Let's just stay with the book. What kind of gospel do you want? Most people want this old hot, little soft, so watered down gospel and all energetic about dancing in church. Drums and guitars and all kind of mess like that. That is that calling as a result of a perverted gospel. 
talking about gospel music. You know what's real gospel music? That comes from the heart. Amen. And it's sung the way the gospel tell you to sing it. We are told to sing. Amen. Not told to play. Or beat. Or blow. Or cut a rug. I don't know what it says in the song one people. We're going to read it. Everybody in the house, turn your Bible to Psalm 150. I don't know what it says in Psalm 150. We're going to turn and read it. In Psalms 150, I will let everybody get there. We're going to all read it. Right in the middle of the Bible. Right in the middle. We're going to turn to Psalms 150. We're going to read it. The psalmist writes, Praise ye the Lord. The Lord. Praise God, God in his sanctuary. Praise him for his power. power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to the excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the fault and the heart. Praise him with the, 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 the string instrument, the triple and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the high symbol. Praise him upon the high sound of the symbol. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, somebody said, Brother, I'm dead right there. That's found in the Psalms. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament. Amen. Now let's see what Jesus said about that. In Luke 24, and verse number 44, Jesus our Lord said, These are the words when I think unto you while I will yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which are written well in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalm concerning those things have been fulfilled. They have served their purpose. Amen. That's why you can't go back to them and grab them all that stuff. It's been fulfilled. Now, we're under a better covenant. Established upon better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 6. And the Bible said, But now has he obtained, when, when, but now, when, but now, what does now mean? Right. At this point. But now he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much more he's a mediator of a better covenant established upon. See, we do it now, something better. Amen. Yes, those things were good back then. But now we have something better. I know the psalmist says in Psalms. Uh, 19 and verse number 7, the Lord of the Lord is perfect and the soul. I know it says that, but you got to understand the purpose. Well, let me. Psalm 19 and verse number 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Now, see, I, wait, hold on, hold on. I know when, when it says the law of the Lord, in that, in that context, it meant the law of Moses because that's the only law they had at that time. But look what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the, the soul. soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Now, what is the purpose of the law? That's the purpose that most folk don't get. That's perfect in this context. It's perfect toward a purpose. I don't believe you heard me. Read it again. The law, the law of the Lord, Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. The testimony of the, the Lord, Lord is sure. Is sure. Making wise the simple. That was pointing this way, pointing toward the New Testament. The law in that context was the Old Testament law, but that was something more, more coming. Amen. What was the purpose of the law? To convert the soul. Okay, now watch this. Beloved, mm -hmm. everybody, go to good. This is my favorite passage, but this will explain it all. Galatians. Chapter 3. We're going to start reading verse 19. Because by, by, by the time Brother Paul finishes, you'll understand now what he meant by that. In Galatians 3 and verse 19, he says, Wherefore the Lord. Now that's that old middle English. If you have a, a New International Version or a North, it, it will tell you what is the purpose of the law. Anybody got that? The N NIV or Revised Standard Version? It says, what is the purpose of the law? Well, that old 
A middle English says, wherefore they insert the law. It means, what's the purpose of having the law? Wherefore they insert the law? It was added and because of transgression to the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. It is the law given against the promise of God, God forbid. For if there had been a law given which might have given life, very much as it should have been by the law. But the scripture has included all of the sin and the promise of faith in Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up until the faith which had not been revealed. Wherefore, the law was our school now to bring us under Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after, in God, we are no longer under the school. Why? Because you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been in the faith of Christ, have blood Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither Father nor Greek, there is neither male nor female, but you are all one in Christ. That is. The whole purpose of the law was to bring them unto Christ. Now we can have our road to perfection. Amen. See what I mean? But see, when, when you go around here and you misteach people and you have them believe all this stuff, and they'll die believing it. Yes, sir. A person who don't know enough can cause more problems than a person who knows anything at all. Amen. Because it will take somebody to come along and take that mess out. Yes. Amen. 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 People's souls are at stake here. Amen. And they need to hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. I talked to a lady on yesterday on my job. This lady is legally blind. But she tunes in to our radio broadcast faithfully every Sunday. As a matter of fact, when I go to work on Tuesday morning, she always stopped me on my way in and talked about the radio program she, she heard that past Sunday. And so, yesterday, when I went to work, I came out and she said, hey, Hardy, everybody called me brother. Hey, brother, come here. So I said, yes, she said, oh, I'm going to tell you, I really, really enjoy your program. I tune in every Sunday. As a matter of fact, I was just, when I first tuned in, I was just surfing my radio, and I heard your voice. And I kept telling my mama, I know that voice. I know that voice. That's brother. I know him. He be in the eyes. I said, yeah. She said, well, yeah. And I've been tuned in ever since. I said, you know, ma'am, thank you for the comment, because sometimes we get folks who criticize us. <laughs> and I'm quoting this to the letter. She said, what? They criticize y'all. That's, how she put it, that's crazy retarded. <laughs> crazy retarded. <laughs> that's crazy retarded. All you're doing is telling the truth. Amen. And that did me all the good in the world. You know, say that. Amen. Here's a woman who's not even in the church, and she's blind. But she tunes in every Sunday. And she said people who do that kind of stuff, they crazy retarded. Amen. <laughs> crazy retarded. <laughs> You know, let me tell you something. When you speak the truth, unfortunately, sometimes you are going to make some enemies. Oh, yeah. You're going to have some folks jealous of you. Some folks going to bad mouth you. Some folks going to be mad because it's not them. Amen. But that's one of the price you pay by telling the truth, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to keep right on telling the truth. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering doctrine. Why? For the time will come when they're not endure sound doctrine. But when they're old enough for the heat to themselves, teachers have having it in, the and they shall turn their ear from the truth and shall be turned. And that's where we are. I'm trying to give you a guilt trip. You too hard. You turn everybody in your way. You have the wrong spirit. The word preach means to proclaim vociferously. Mean with a loud voice. Amen. We want to with a loud, loud voice. To get someone's attention. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why you have a loud voice. How you gonna get my attention? Why well, talking just like this? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, what is that doing? Nothing. <laughs> a loud voice is to get so.
someone uh, takes me in. And if you are, then wake up! Come to your secret. Hey, man. God went to the doctor one time and said, Doc, I got a problem, man. He said, What's going on? He said, Man, my snow ring is so bad. It's just, I, I can't know what to do. I'm taking stuff that's not really. He said, It's disturbing your wife. My wife is disturbing the whole church. <laughs> anyway, we're saying, we're saying, look, listen, the average John Q. public. Is so far removed from the true gospel, he can't tell the true gospel from a forgotten gospel. Why? Because he never told the truth. You can't stand to hear Brother Rollins, but you can stand to hear Kirk Franklin talk about a Holy Ghost party. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible you'll find that. You got a problem, Brother Rollins said, Great well, talk and see that, but, hope, but, but Kirk Franklin's about a Holy Ghost party. <laughs> it's like a miracle. And all this kind of foolishness. That is truly strange. Yes, it is. That is truly strange. And most folks you know, ought to criticize the, the, the least amount of work. Amen. 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 Brother Yes, sir. Uh, this is what God told Isaiah about his loud voice. In the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. chapter 58, verse 1, the word of God says to Isaiah, cry aloud. Fair not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sin. Now see what I mean? See, see? But see, what we have today, people have been duped in, in believing, a preacher got to be soft spoken. Amen. And talk just like this. Amen. You know, and hold your hand like this, with the Bible on your arm, and say things like, well, actually, the Apostle Paul said this. <laughs> you know, that, that's what we have. Hey. No, no, that, 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 that may be good for a TV show. Hey, Amen. But not going to save any soul. Amen. Hey, they want a soft, so watered down kind of message. That's foolishness. You need to preach the word because that's going to get folks' attention. If somebody's wrong, hey, that's wrong. You know, I, I don't go around just picking fight on the boat. But if a person don't know bank robbing is wrong, bank robbing is wrong. Amen. I'm not bashing the bank robber. I'm just telling you it's wrong. Amen. If somebody's lying, lying is wrong. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Revelation 21 verse 8 that all, we're going to read it. We're going to read it about all liars, <laughs> even when they come in colors. They, they're wrong too. <laughs> in Revelation 21 and verse number 8. But the, but the fear, the, the, the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, the and, the and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the adulterers, how, how many of them? All how, how many? All. All. Even when they come in colors, all liars have a part in the lake that burns with fire See? and brimstone, which is the second day. I'm not bad mouthing liars. I'm not telling you, you're going to hell for lying. Amen. Even the lies that come in colors. And, and let's be frank about it. Lies don't come in colors. Amen. A little white lie. No, it's, just, it's a lie. Amen. A little lie or a small lie. It's a lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. Amen. Amen. Y'all stop playing games around here. It's foolishness. Either tell like it is, or don't tell it all. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, more, more questions? Come on, come on. Would it be truth for saying when a person tell a lie and you begin to believe your own lie? Boy, See, that's why it's wrong to lie to begin with. Because every one of us here, every one of us have influence over somebody. Amen. Be it positive or negative. Amen. If you got some influence over folk and you, you've been lying to them, they will be loyal to you all you told them a lie. Yeah. And they'll go on believing that lying to you. And when you die and go to hell, then they'll have to die and go to hell because you lied to them. That's why it's best to tell the truth. A lie is a lie is a lie. Jesus our Lord said in John 8, 31, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. All I've ever done here in Brookship is talk the truth. Amen, church? Amen. I got a whole church with people. I've never told any lies up here. Amen. I've always talked the truth. Amen. 
as the Bible says. So I'll never give my opinion to say, I think or I feel. I never said that. Amen. I am not at liberty to give my opinion. Amen. I must give what the Bible says. Amen. The scripture says it. No one get mad at me. I'm going to tell you the truth. You can cuss. You can fuss. You can swell up and bust. When you get through, the Bible is still right. Amen. But I think you shouldn't say that. You have the wrong spirit. How you got a spirit like God? And who are you to judge another man's servant? Amen. 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 Just because I raise my wife don't mean I don't have love. Amen. Amen. How many, how many parents out there raise your voice at your children? Do you know any less? No. <laughs> but see, that's where we are. This is the mentality problem. The point is, a perverted gospel will lead both folk to be lost. Keep the gospel pure. Keep it safe. Keep it pure. Well, Brother Robbins, what's the gospel? Let's hear about this morning. If you don't know, how, how, how did God say it? We don't know. Now you know. If you don't know, <laughs> hear, hear, hear what it is right here. Everybody in the house in 1 Corinthians 15. Don't know? Not, now you're going to know right now. You're going to know now. In 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, verse 1 through 4, the Bible says what? Moral brother, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, but also you have received, and where you stand, but which also you are saved, you keep in memory what I preach unto you, lest you have believed in vain. But I deliver unto you first of all, see, see how the Christ died for our sins according to the future, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the future. I'll wait for you. What shall we say? What shall we say?